Welcome back. I'm going to talk to you about a stunning, deeply moving and affecting documentary now called Children of the Pyre, made by Rajesh S. Jala. I can't thank my friend and mentor Mitran Devanesan enough for inviting me to watch it. I was unwell and almost did not go, but I am so glad I did because I would have missed something extraordinary if I hadn't gone. The setting is Varanasi in Manikarnika to be precise, the busiest cremation ground in India where Rajesh Jala, the filmmaker, spent close to two years making the film. Now, the documentary ends with a beautiful, profound Kabir Doha set to equally beautiful and evocative music. It goes something like, and I translate, The swan will take wing, the world is a tableau of views. Rajesh Jala, the filmmaker's view or eye, is so objective, so dispassionate, and by being that way, and for those very reasons, you are drawn into this harrowing, hellish world where children think nothing of casually picking up half-burnt limbs and putting them back into the pyre. They stoke the fire, pick heat sores off each other's backs. They sleep with sweat-stained dreams and visions of corpses haunting their clouded minds. They curse, they laugh uninhibitedly, spout philosophy, they dance with gay abandon. These children come to stay in your minds long after the film's over. These children of the pyre. <laughs> Over 150 corpses are consigned to the pyres in Manikarnika every day. And it is believed that if you are cremated here, you get moksha, liberation from the cycle of births and deaths. Making their living burning the dead and taking their shrouds to resell them are a bunch of street smart, cursing, marijuana smoking, determined and adorable young boys, really young boys, who've grown up much too fast for their ages. <laughs> Ravi, Gagan, Ashish, Kapil, Manish, Sunil and Yogi tell us their stories in and as the children of the pyre. It's not an easy film to watch, believe me, content-wise. It's gut-wrenching and visually too, you see this grim reality through an ashy, smoke-screened haze and even though I don't know what a burning cop smells like, all through the film I felt claustrophobic and queasy. Imagine then the lives of the children and imagine what Rajesh Jala must have gone through while making the film. At the end of the 74 minute film, you feel suffocated, you want to cry, you smile through your tears, you feel all shaken, you feel overpowered by a multitude of emotions. Please watch this documentary somehow. To borrow Rajesh Jala's words, films don't bring revolution but they surely change and influence perception to fight for justice and humanity. And that is a solid foundation for revolution, or at least awareness. The most important thing, awareness. I caught up with the soft-spoken, totally unassuming, but indefatigable director after the screening. I say indefatigable because, as you all know, there is no money in documentary filmmaking, but Rajesh Jala couldn't be bothered. He only does what he believes in. Mr. Rajesh Jala, I was just telling the viewers that uh, they have to beg, bro borrow, steal, hunt high and low for this documentary, but they have to watch it. It's a great pleasure to meet you, and I was most affected by your film. Uh, lovely to have you here. I was wondering if I may start this little chat with you with a little uh, personal reference to the time uh, when you lived in a refugee camp. Now, Mr. Rajesh Jala belongs to a family of Kashmiri Pandits, and they were evicted from their homeland and had to spend um, uh, several years in a refugee camp with about 100 people living under one roof. So what I want to ask you is, it, does this have something to do with the fact that you choose difficult subjects and look at the lives of people who face challenges? 
not consciously but i think uh, the kind of life uh, you choose you know life offers you a lot it, it definitely influences your uh, perception i have gone through a difficult times in life so it will definitely have in my subconscious mind but i didn't choose anything intentionally to have that kind of uh, film it just happened it just happened to meet these kids and i just interacted with them i met them and i i tr- i discovered them and i started shooting now when i was watching the documentary i must admit that i felt i felt all my senses were assaulted i could smell the the cops is burning i could literally feel the 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 suit in the air and all of that and you lived there for close to 2 years what did you go through i mean uh, did you un- uh, go through any revulsion initially when we when i went there i stayed there for a month i was there for a recce and when i met these kids and i thought uh, i was like uh, it was a revelation to me to see that these kids living uh, working at this cremation ground initially it was very difficult for me to shoot and to be there at the cremation ground because i was surrounded with dead bodies this is the busiest cremation ground in india because hindus believe whoever is cremated here gets moksha so the fire never stops there the bodies burn day and night so initially it was physically a challenge and it, more than that it was an emotional challenge to be there but i was inspired by these kids how they survive how they struggle at this cremation ground and yet they laugh so their presence made me gave me a lot of strength to be there so all credit goes to these kids for m- making this film so how did you establish a rapo how long did you did it take for you to win their confidence and just get them to chat with you so openly uh, i consider it to be a lifelong relationship i consider it is uh, even evolving even today so yeah then it just started with a normal chat but we gradually had uh, you know i would i just follow them spend time with them and talk to them i would follow them like a shadow for first few weeks they would treat me as a visitor but later on they 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 thought that this guy is not going to get rid of us <laughs> they let me be so i was always there so one then came a time when they wouldn't be conscious of me or the camera and when that time came then the actual film started so they opened up and they interacted anything they i would ask them anything and they would reply uh, we got to see very little of their families we only got to see the father of one young boy did you spend a lot of time with their families did they have objections to this initially they had objections i had also shot with the families but eventually i take a, i took a decision of not having the families in the film because uh, i had to show seven families a b that i didn't want to move out of the cremation ground it was such a powerful i because you know separately if you look at the lives of these kids they spend most of their time at the cremation ground so i didn't want to move away initially they had some bit of concerns and all but they, gradually they were like okay when i they, they understood me as a person as a filmmaker now while i was doing my research i read in a, read in an earlier interview that um, i mean where you said that you want these children to undergo counseling and maybe even psychiatric help but when you see the film you see such life and attitude and so much joy the weaver in these children it, uh, this is their life how do you think something like uh, counseling will help them because this is all they know you would have to trans sort of take them out of the situation and it's i don't think that would help at all i don't agree with you is what i want to say see there to uh, a that uh, these guys are very wise they are perhaps ahead of their time they are very mature they would they are very intelligent but counseling would mean that they are working at a very very horrible place this has you know we have to sensitize them they are desensitized kids so they don't know how the basic so called civilized behavior which we me and you are aware of a that was the main uh, that was the point i was referring to but separately coming to the main issue of mission which the film is about actually the film is not only a film it's a mission to try to change the lives of these kids last year i approached plan international which is a leading ngo and uh, they liked the project and all they saw the film they liked it and they we uh, launched a project which is called project bhagirathi which aims to transform the lives of 300 children in banaras this project was launched on 4th of september 2009 and uh, separately there was another initiative with a friend of mine who is a new york based friend who saw the film and all he is sponsoring the education of these kids 
last month on September on uh, 17th of February, four out of the seven kids were sent to a boarding school in Sarnath. Yeah. So they are already in school. Four. Rest of the three, uh, Gagan, the dancer, is at the dance academy. He's learning dance. The other two are we are just you know they are indecisive. They're not able to decide what to do. So these seven kids would hopefully. We're just trying that these kids would live a meaningful life. They would come out of this darkness and uh, plan international and this separate mission would help us to do that. <laughs> The film has won the award for the best documentary at the Montreal and Sao Paulo Film Festivals, Asiatica Film Medial in Rome and it has won the National Film Award to name just a few. Thanks to the Dr. V. Jagannathan Foundation, Bill Roth Hospitals and Cancer for bringing us this incredible documentary which I can't emphasize this enough, you must watch. It will be made available soon so do look out for it. Coming up from our great director series, Steven Spielberg's Jaws.